everyone, so today I tested out the Nikon V1 camera. You're probably wondering why the hell did I even test it out? Well, I thought, you know, you can't just diss it without testing it out. And what I dissed before is not how good it was or how it felt or anything. I dissed the fact that it's a camera which nobody really was asking for, but Nikon just gave. I also dissed the fact that it was a hugely expensive for what is a CSC, a compact system camera, a compact system, something like that, with a tiny sensor and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, I went down to my local Calumet shop and had a little play of it. Uh, so I'll show you some of the videos which I did and some of the, the, the focusing ability of it and what I kind of think about it. So what I can say, good news about it, is that it feels, well I, I did the V version, the V1, which is the more expensive one. It feels like a good camera, a good point and shoot camera anyway. It's pretty heavy, it's pretty sturdy, it feels pretty solid. That is it's a good quality in its feel, definitely. I tried it with the 10 to 30 millimeter kit lens that you get with it. It's not a huge f 2.8 or anything like that, it's like a, a 3.5 to 5.6. Uh, and that is equivalent to 27 millimeter to 81 millimeter, I think, or something around about that. I built out my Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter lens, which I've got, but that's a 2.8, so different stuff going on there. Size-wise, that lens I thought fitted very well with that camera. It wasn't too heavy, it wasn't too big a giant mega lens with a tiny body or anything like that. Uh, so I think that lens is absolutely fine. There is a 10 to 110 millimeter lens, which is a giant chunk of glass that you put on top uh, in front of a small body, which I'm not thinking is really that cool. There is also a 10 millimeter like pancake lens, um, which is an f 2.8, which I think could be quite good as well if you are just wanting a small camera to take around with you. Focus wise, I was impressed how just automatically it was going in and out and it was getting whatever I wanted in focus very, very well. Its focus was fast and totally silent, which was good. It's video. Now, this is where I was a wee bit confused because it says it does it in 1080 video, but what it is is 1080i which is interlaced, which means it's actually not 1080 anything. It's actually 540 lines that way and 540 lines that way. And what happens is it'll take that bit, then that bit, then that bit, then that bit, and just kind of do, 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 Which I think might have a benefit in that that might get rid of the problem which most digital SLRs have, which is rolling shutters. When you go from left to right, what happens is straight lines start bending like that because whenever it's taking a progressive image, it's starting from the top down to the bottom, top down to the bottom, top down to the bottom, top down to the bottom like that. And if you move there, if you start from the top, by the time it gets over there, it's over there. So it be it goes at an angle. So maybe this interlace is actually quite good to get rid of this uh, rolling shutter effect. But I'm not 100% sure. I only had a little test. Could, I, and I didn't see much rolling shutter, as you will see there. So I think it might be might be beneficial there, but however, mm, not too sure. The other thing I, I absolutely love, and as you all know, I love slow motion, and it had the ability to do 400 frames a second. Oh, 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 oh so good. Uh, so I was throwing up my GoPro, which can do 120 frames a second. So this is more than th three times? Yeah, more than three times the, the shutter speed, or yeah, frames per second. And it is sexy. And it shows you it in slow motion as well, whenever you've, you've recorded it but it is a very small resolution. It's a good long resolution, but it's only 260 or 270 pixels up and down the way. So this here is the exact size in a 1080 video, like what I'm shooting on just now. If I expand that up to seeing it so it's in a full 1080 video, you kind of see that it's getting a little bit grainy and it looks a bit pump, but the slow motion is just gorgeous. Can't beat it. It also does even faster than that. It can do up to 1,200 frames a second, but then we're talking about tiny, minuscule resolution there. So, just, whatever, don't bother. The other 
I think it says it is designed to be intuitive and easy to use and super intelligent and it takes the thought out of getting a good photo. There's bits where you, it can take like 60 frames in one second in HD and it does something with it and it gives you the best buy photos and all this kind of stuff. This really isn't for professional photographers. Although it does, you can, in the menu settings, get the like uh, aperture settings and shutter settings and all that kind of stuff. You can do that. But this camera is not for that. This is for the kind of rich soccer moms, if you're American, or rich hockey moms in uh, Britain. And uh, that just kind of want a camera which can just do whatever the hell they want it to do. They want to go, oh, Timmy is chasing after the ball very well. I'll take a photo. Boop. And for that, it works absolutely fine. I don't think you've got any problems with it and it's focusing is great and it does everything that a mum would want. I, however, would want... Ah, it's not for me. I shouldn't even be asking what I want in that kind of camera. It's not something I want. Anyway, let's just go back to the good things about it. It's ISO settings. We'll have a look at a couple of photos which I did which was inside the building which is just pretty pump lighting. And we'll look at the uh, ISO settings there. I'll do a little video afterwards which I'll integrate into this magically now. Hi everyone, here I am again. This is Future Dome here. So that dome you just saw was me about an hour ago. So I'm in the future now and I'm having a look at the photos. So let's have a quick look at them. These were shot inside Calumet, which is a camera shop in Edinburgh. In fact, it's throughout the world, um, but I was inside their store, took some shots. And these are the JPEG photos because I don't think Adobe yet has the raw conversion thingamabob going on yet. Uh, look at this shot straight away. I was like, hmm, ISO 800 maybe? Looked at the left, or the right if you're dyslexic, um, and I've got an ISO 3200. I'm like, geez, oh, that is, that is damn good. I don't know why the camera has chosen an f7.1 and an 80th of a second, uh, but for a camera with such a small sensor, I was expecting much worse performance than that. Um, remember, it's a 10 megapixel image, and this is at 10 millimeters. Now, the next shot, I'm sure, uh, let's see there. So this is the difference. That's 10 millimeters, that's 30 millimeters. So that is the difference in zoom from looking at the center there. So that's at 10, that's at 30. Now, that 30 has gone for an 80th of a second. Again, it's at ISO 1600. Whew, right, the noise is very, very well controlled in the JPEG shots. Um, I, again, I don't. Maybe it was just set on f seven point one. Random choice to choose, but uh, not looking super sharp there. Now, at an eightieth of a second at thirty millimeters, I would expect to see something a little bit sharper than that. So, uh, not hugely fussed about the sharpness that is meant to be so great about it. And then let's see at ten millimeters. Uh, it seems definitely seems a little bit sharper uh, throughout the the range there, uh, so maybe the vibration reduction isn't as good as it's expected to be, um, but that's just from what I saw. Here, I was having a look at kind of the dynamic range, and again, it's just using auto everything, auto focus, auto ISO, auto white balance, and auto contrast, and all that kind of stuff, and it's it's not bad actually. I'm I'm thinking I might be seeing a bit of dirt on the lens. No, that's a bird. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> Uh, but we've got lots of detail all the way into the, the shadows here, and yeah, it's it's nice, good... Like, this is a real difficult shot because it's got a warm sun background, yet the foreground is in shadow, which normally gives it quite a blue tone, and it's I would say it's handled it really well. What I would want is that bit to be exactly the colour that it is. This bit being blue is absolutely fine, this bit being kind of warmy orange, absolutely fine. So I'd say it's done a good effort at picking the white balance. Good work. That was ISO 100. And again, at an 80th of a second, I have no idea why it's... Okay, maybe its intuitiveness isn't as good as what I thought. And that's another shot there. Yeah, so it's, that's a very high contrast shot there, and it is holding its details well. Like, let's say if I were to do a little bit of editing in Lightroom. Yeah, there's a lot... <laughs> wow, okay, even in its JPEGs, it is holding so much detail here. I have to give it its dues... Nikon, you're kind of doing very well with this camera so far. Uh, however, this next one, this is a lens test shot. This is the barrel distortion at 10 millimeters. As you can see, it's kind of warped, like the middle bit's coming towards you. And at, ooh, that doesn't look sharp at all. Okay, so at 
seven, no, at 30 millimeters at an 80th of a second. I'd expect it to be a heck of a lot sharper than that. There is a little, is that pin cushioning going on? Just a little bit of bending in the way? Mm, maybe, maybe a little. Um, but that, that's not good. I'm not impressed with that bit there. Um, up in the corners as well, that's really blurry, but, ooh, no, 80th of a second, what was too slow. Normally I'd always say that you should have a shutter speed as fast as your focal length, including the, uh, the crop factor as well. So 30 being around about 80, no, 3 times 3, yeah, it's around about 90. So that should be an absolutely fine, um, shutter speed. And it, with the vibration reduction, there shouldn't be any problem with the shutter speed on that at all. So, mm, not enjoying that, but, and also, in a 10 millimeters, you've got a lot of barrel distortion. Again, this is something which probably only photographers will notice, but hockey mams probably won't, and they'll think it's absolutely great. Anyway, back to previous doll. Don't tell them the results. Okay, so that was the ISO settings, and, uh, yeah, I don't know if it was good or bad, because I haven't seen that bit yet. I haven't, that, that, what you just saw was the future from now, from what I'm about to do. So, it was either great or it was really rubbish, I don't know. Now this is our thing, the design. When I first saw it, I thought it looks really plain, it looks really dull, it looks not that cool. Hmm. I've changed my mind now. I think it's actually quite cool. I think it's a cool looking camera. It's kind of gone, I'm sure I read somewhere where somebody said it's kind of gone a bit Apple in the terms of it's kind of gone a little bit more minimalist, it's gone a little bit more retro and it's just kind of cool. I quite like it, but not cool for a, like a man, not cool for a photographer, but cool for like if you're like a girl or something like that. But yeah, it, I thought I actually kind of ended up liking it. But then the only issue was I asked what the price was and they said for the body it's £730. Whew. Now, £730, I can buy three GoPros for that. Actually, that's a lie. For £730, I can buy two and a half GoPros, which I'd love. That'd be amazing. And if I want to get with a big lens, or more than one lens, then it's almost £900, which is three GoPro Hero 2s. And I'd much rather get three GoPro Hero 2s. I don't know why I'd need three, but it would be awesome to have one in front of my head, one in the back of my head, one in my... somewhere else. Price-wise, it is out of the kind of stratosphere in terms of its comp competitors. Um, it's not really doing it, but what this is, is for rich, well-off mums or kind of kids that want to get into photography but just like have loads of money to spend and they want a small camera. Or it's for the girls that go out to the clubs with their mates and they have lots of money and they've got a tiny little handbag but they want to have a camera which is amazing and can do everything for them. That's who it's for. So girls, yes. Mums, yes. Rich little kids, yes. People that don't really want to think about composing a photo or just having to do anything, or people that hate taking photos and then finding later on, ooh, it's blurry, why is that? This is really for people that just want to do it and it does it everything for you and it does it very well. So, in conclusion, it's not bad. It, it, actually, I like, it's great. It's a very good camera, it's got amazing functions, it's got amazing abilities, it's a very intelligent camera. But its price sucks and that's where this if if it if it was like five hundred pounds, maximum ma five hundred pounds with one of those lenses, I would say fantastic camera, full five stars or ten out of ten uh, from Nikon. But it's not. It is seven hundred and thirty or up to nine hundred pounds for that. So the price just isn't worth it at the moment yet. The technology is there, the functions are there, the settings are there, the Focus the lenses is all there, but the price is what's stopping it being great. It could be great, but it's not. And it could be the revolution of the kind of new compact system camera things. Because of the price, I think Nikon are just going to be edging themselves a little bit too high for the competition. And stuff like the Pentax Q, I think it is, which has even a smaller sensor and is a small camera. That's the thing. The Nikon is using a smaller sensor than your normal three-thirds, no, four-thirds camera, but it's not a smaller camera. So it's like, why have a smaller sensor if you're going to have a same-size camera? Let's make the camera smaller. Don't know. Maybe that'll be their V2 or their X2. 
or something like that. Anyway, that was my thoughts on the Nikon V1, which I tried out today. Hope that helps. Cheers. Bye-bye. I, however, would want... Ah, it's not for me. I shouldn't even be asking what I want in that kind of camera. It's not something I want. Anyway, let's just go back to the good things about it. It's ISO settings. We'll have a look at the couple of photos which I did, which was inside...